All right, so today we're gonna to focus on how you can get amazing results in your social media. I'm gonna focus on the top 20 mistakes people make in social media, and then how you can actually alleviate those mistakes, not make the mistakes, and do them as something that works great for you. Number one biggest mistake made on social media is not being social putting something up there and not actually commenting back, messaging people. You know, the whole thing of it is to communicate. You don't go into a party and say to someone, hey, how you doing? And then walk away type thing. You don't post a picture up and then when someone says, oh, great picture. No, you reply to that person. If someone's on your LinkedIn and they comment on your blog or your article that you posted, you might message them and actually start a conversation. Hey, great that you like that thing. Be social is the whole thing. And part of that is being social about your life, about people. If there's a birthday party in the office, put that stuff up on social media, not just here's my product, here's my price. No, be social about it, get people. People love stories, so bring them into the story, not just the other thing. You know, it took me a long time to learn the fact that uh, people really love, here's how I learned this rather than here's what you have to learn type thing. Took me a long while to learn that one, but finally got it through my thick skull. Number two mistake that people make in social media uh, is going for likes rather than conversations, okay? What we want out of social media is conversations. What we want to have happen. So rather than putting up a beautiful picture that just says, here's the picture, what we need to do, and it's like if I look at someone's Instagram, let's say, uh, the picture goes up, then you scroll across, there's a video, then you scroll across, there's an offer or a call to action or a, hey, call us now, DM this, type this word if you want a copy of it, Did, uh, send me this message. You know, asking people to do something, asking them to start a conversation type thing. We don't just want them to go, oh, I like that picture. Yes, we want likes, but mostly what we want is conversations out of our social media. So I'll give you a simple example. Instead of just putting up, hey, here's my latest blog, I might write up a, a thing that says, latest blog on the, the seven steps to reframe this, okay? Or the four ways of that, or the top 20 mistakes social media people make. Yes, I could use this in a blog. If you want a copy, type the word blog below and I'll send you the link. I will also at some point just put the blog up, but I'm getting conversations with people who are interested is the most important thing. Uh, third mistake, lacking consistency. Uh, whether it's brand consistency, consistency of look and feel, whether it's consistency of timing, my blog goes up every Wednesday morning, that's when it goes up, it always has, it always will, that's the day, you know, whatever it might be. My podcast goes up on this day of the week, every single week. Uh, whether it's frequency, you know, if, if you're posting every day and then you stop and you start again in a month and go every day, that's, uh, no, you're better off to post every three days and always be posting every three days. Consistency of frequency, uh, consistency of message, always be on the similar message. Consistency is a big thing. If I'm over here, if I'm running a YouTube channel on fishing and then all of a sudden I'm a YouTube channel for sports, no, we got to have consistency of the message. The people who are subscribed to us are subscribed to us for this reason, not that reason type thing. And finally, consistency of target, okay? The target audience that you're going after, knowing who you're making your content for. There's no use making content one week for older people and the next week for young people. There's no use going for this target audience and then that target audience. Keep the, the same consistency of target audiences in your social media. Um, number four mistake, focus on instant, not permanent. Let me explain the difference between these things. If we look at, at, at online social media, your blog, your YouTube, your Pinterest, these are permanent things. Your website, these are permanent things. When I put a video up on YouTube, I was looking at my YouTube just yesterday, and I saw a video from 14 years ago that's still getting hits today, right? Now, A, that teaches me I got to make more videos on that subject, right? 
But what I'm th what I'm seeing here is too much focus on things like, okay, let me throw something up on TikTok. Let me throw something up on Insta. Yes, we want the stuff up on Insta and TikTok. We want the stuff on LinkedIn and Face and all of those things. But to make it most important, we need that permanent stuff there. The YouTube, the blog posts, that ability to get SEO and find things forever is the most important foundational stuff. There's no use directing people to a website that's bad. There's no use getting, you know, you've got to make sure that you have enough blogs, you answer their questions, all of that stuff. Anyway, that's a whole other video on uh, SEO mistakes. I'll make sure I record one on that. Uh, number five biggest mistakes is not building your database from your social media. It's great to have 100,000 followers on your Facebook account, but your job is to get those people on your platform, okay? So you want them on your CRM. You want their name and email and phone number or whatever connective details you need. Yes, they're on your LinkedIn and you're connected, but what if LinkedIn changes the rules? What if Facebook again changes the rules? Not like they've ever done that before. You know, we want to get them to our database. So make them offers to get them on. Download this ebook or, hey, if you want a copy of this, send me your email address. We'll send you the link. You know, that sort of stuff. And I see this on your YouTube. Are you making offers in your YouTube videos for people to download things? If you look at the links below, I got a full training for you for free that if you just click that link, you get the free training. And yes, I'm asking you for your email address. If I'm going to give you a valuable 12-part training, I definitely want to connect with you at some point. Okay, so make sure you understand your goal is to get them from your social onto your CRM, onto your database, onto your platform at uh, some point in time. Number six, uh, selling too much and not offering enough value. Uh, it's a big mistake. Uh, Vaynerchuk says three to one, three value to one promotion of anything that you do. I, I'm a bit more than that. I like a lot more just add value, add value, add value. I'm very much an add value guy. If you look, if you're on my YouTube channel here or wherever you're watching this, you will see the amount of content that I give you for free and yes, I, I do want you to connect with us, but I have to build no like, and trust first. And the way to build no like, and trust is to keep adding value and doing that sort of thing. Oh, what are we up to? Number seven. Number seven, no strategy. Uh, and I, I guess we can go back to consistency with this. If, if to have consistency, you got to have a strategy. You got to know where you're taking the people. You know, where do you want people to go? What is it that you want them to do? From your social media, I want them to do this so that eventually they buy that. It's not just about putting up content for the sake of content. Yes. I hope you've found this content extremely valuable. Yes, I hope that leads you to understand how what I teach works for you and how you can grow by reading the books, by t attending my courses, by doing all of the other things. Maybe it's that you need a business coach for your business and you jump over to Action Coach, uh, or maybe you need a life coach and you jump over to Bucket List Life Coaching, or maybe it's employee engagement you need. You know, as I build that relationship with you, I think that that works to do that. So what you've got to work out is the strategy is how do I use these posts to get them in communication with me? How do I get them to have a conversation with me so that then I can lead them to a conversion? Okay, it's got to be thinking about uh, post conversation, conversion. You've got to have that strategy thought through. What are you offering to these people that this material promotes? Uh, number eight, no offers. So, you know, you go back a couple and I say selling too much. Well, not making an offer is, well, not as bad. Well, it's probably worse than selling too much, I guess. Not asking people to buy is a crazy thing. We've got to ask people to raise their hand. Uh, if you haven't read my book, Raise Your Hand Marketing, grab a copy of it, make sure you read it, or watch my Raise Your Hand Marketing webinar uh, here online as well on YouTube, etc. So when we think about getting an offer, the offer doesn't need to be buy. The offer could be just simple download this, order that, do this thing. If you want a copy, connect with us here, attend this webinar, 
But getting people to raise their hand and say, hey, I'm interested in what you do is really an important part. At the very least, ask them to connect or ask them to subscribe. If you're watching me on YouTube, subscribe to this thing. Wherever channel you're on with me, connect with me so that I can keep giving you this great information uh, here online all the time. Uh, number nine, not enough storytelling. You know, I, I love it. I do a lot of live seminars around the world, speaking for uh, big organizations and uh, speaking in front of big crowds of business people around the world. And one of the things that they always say to me is, Brad, we love the fact that you're a storyteller because th there's no way to get a lesson across better than telling a story. And so every time that, that I teach, it's got to be storytelling. So if you look at your social media and ask yourself the question, Am I telling any stories here? I'll give you an example. Uh, I put up a post that was about how to do something, right? And we tested the how to do something against here's how I learned, or his, actually it was here's how my mentor taught me to do this. How to do it versus here's how my mentor taught me to do it. The how to do it got this many views. The how my mentor taught me to do it got this many views. The length of watch on this one was massive because there was a story, there was a hook. People wanted to stay and find out. What happened? How did it happen? You know, uh, Chip and Dan Heath in Made to Stick talk about the fact that you've got to get people hooked in and want to stay for the end of, of the story. Uh, number 10 of our top 20 mistakes, not updating profiles. Profiles need to be updated consistently. Your Yelp or your TripAdvisor or your Google, uh, Google My Business page, your LinkedIn page, all of these things need to be updated consistently. And when I say that, I mean at least every 90 days you got to update this thing. It's like your blog needs to be done every week at the very minimum type thing. You want to be making sure that on social you're doing the, the right thing. And um, making sure that everything is up to date. It's crazy to me sometimes when you go to a, a YouTube channel and you click the links and it's an old link. It doesn't work anymore. It's like, come on, guys, get your act together. Make sure this works. So go through all your old pro all your profiles and update them all. Uh, number 11, not enough video. Uh, you know, I do my podcast and podcast is technically a, an auditory thing. You know, it's things that people listen to. But these days I get just as much on YouTube with people watching it or on Facebook with people watching the podcast. People love video. They just love video. And, uh, you know, I can't help but, but say I, uh, Apple has made it or, or Samsung and Apple have made it so simple for us. They've given us massive quality in our phone cameras. Uh, as long as you got a good microphone and, and, and a good uh, uh, lighting system, you can make any video anywhere, anytime, especially testimonial videos. Those are the sorts of things that we got to do more of. Um, next big social media mistake, one size fits all. Listen, every platform is different. What's needed on YouTube is different to what's needed on, uh, on Instagram. Just the shape of the videos alone is really important to do differently. How a reel is done versus how a, a story, I mean, they're, they're just different shapes, they're different sizes, they're different things. So you've really got to take a look at what platforms you're using and either commit to do the platform properly or don't do the platform type thing. And I, and, and I want to be really blunt about this. I know some business people that want to do on all platforms all the time. Well, I got some guys and some gals that I know that they just focus on YouTube. Uh, I got another guy that is only on LinkedIn. He only does LinkedIn and that gets him so much business because he's so good at it type thing. Another uh, one of my coaches over in uh, Indonesia, he is permanently on Facebook. He doesn't do LinkedIn. He doesn't do all the others. He's just Facebook, but he's so good at it. So commit to do it properly or don't do it at all is, is probably the thing. It's not a one size fits all. Each platform performs differently. The half-life of the posts is different. You know, doing a tweet or an X or, or a thread is totally different to doing uh, something over on TikTok. My video, like if, if I put this video on TikTok, it's not going to work, okay? Cuts of this video on TikTok will work, but not the video itself. And the video has to be edited to go on TikTok. It's got to have other crazy stuff going on in the background. Otherwise, it's not getting viewed, right? Um, 
Number 13, not boosting. Let me, let me be clear about this. Okay. What do I mean by boosting? Social media technically is a great way to test for what you're going to promote. So if I put a post up on my Facebook and it goes, boom, it does amazing things, right? There's lots of people interacting with it. It's getting shared. It's getting comments. It's getting all of those things. That post needs to be turned into marketing. That post needs to be turned into an ad or at least boosted to more people so that it can get a great result. Now, if I go over to my Instagram and I put a photograph up there, or I put a video or a photograph and then slide across to a video and slide across to an offer. If I put that up there and 24 hours later, the only seven people that have liked it are me, my family and my staff, I got to delete that thing. Yes, you delete posts that don't work, okay? It's crazy to me that people will put up promotional stuff and I go to their Instagram page and all I see is a hundred promotional things. Your promotional piece, put it up for 48 hours, then delete it type thing. So when people go to your, your page or go to your profile, all they see is great stuff. They don't see, oh, they're just gonna spam me every 24 to 48 hours. No, I see great stuff, they wanna do it. Yes, you will still put promotional stuff up, but you delete it afterwards so that it's it's not there. Um, very clear though, when something works on social media, you should look at how you turn that into advertising so that you can get amazing results from it, not just great results from it. Uh, 14, not using analytics. Google Analytics, SEMrush, I mean... YouTube's analytics, Facebook's analytics. I mean, they, they literally give you the data to make your decisions. You go and look at your YouTube videos and you go, okay, where did people drop off on this? And, and even you can go to it and see, there's a graph along the bottom that shows you where people are most interested. It goes up in white and then it goes down and you can see, okay, 50% of people stopped viewing here. Why, what did I do there that 50% of people shut it off at that point on my video? Why did 50% of people turn that off? So using analytics, measurement and reporting of social media, you've got to measure, you've got to report on it and know what works and what didn't. What posts are getting great results right now and what posts aren't? You know, on Facebook, there was a period where memes were phenomenal and memes got all of these results. And then all of a sudden, memes got no results, okay? And then all of a sudden, it was short videos. And then, and then, like... You've got to be clear on what it is that you're aiming to do, but the analytics will tell you this stuff. Uh, I, I'm just a lover of measurement and reporting. I really am. And I think that not doing it costs you a lot because you keep putting stuff up there that's not getting used, okay? Not getting viewed, not getting shared. If it's not getting shared, why do it type thing if it's not doing that? Um, 15... Not asking for reviews, testimonials, and unboxings. Reviews, massively important on social, okay? Reviews are a part of it. And asking your best customers to review, uh, just in uh, one of our businesses, a restaurant business, we have this little card thing and you take it over to people, you tap it on their phone and it immediately helps them give you a review instantaneously. So when you've got someone that says, wow, this was amazing, phenomenal, you say, oh, would you mind just giving us a review? You tap their phone, they, they give you a review. You know, you get it straight away right there. Ask your best customers, ask the happiest customers to give you a review instantly type thing. Testimonial videos, I think are massively important. I know at the end of every event I do, we have a camera outside asking people, what did they learn most? What did they get most out of the event? Very important. Unboxing videos. I know in one of our companies, we just put it on the outside of the box, put a simple sticker and say, hey, when you do an unboxing of this, make sure you tag, use this hashtag and tag us at these addresses. And just by putting it there, people started doing it type thing. It's just a reminder of that. Uh, number 16, not, let me, how do I put this simply? Well, unboxing is kind of a way of, of looking at this. Not giving people social opportunities. Let me tell you a quick story. Uh, a friend of mine in New Zealand has a great winery. And I looked around his winery and I thought, wow, this, you must get a lot of social media. He said, yeah, we get a little bit. 
And here's the thing. He had these beautiful spots where people could take photographs and where they could do that, but he didn't ask them to. So we put up some little signs that saying Instagram photo spot number one of four. And we put better lighting in and some better seating and a whole bunch of different things. And all of a sudden, people started posting about it. You know, I was watching a car that, <laughs> that literally blows my mind. I was in a car dealership and I was just looking at something for one of my kids and someone was picking up their brand new car. And literally they walked them outside, gave them the keys and said, let me take you around the car. There was no, ta-da, there was no confetti. There was no pull over the, the, the covers. There was no nothing. That's an amazing moment where you can get massive social. See, the real key to social media is about getting other people to post about you. The real thing you want in social media is not what you post, it's what others say about you. So do you give people awards? If you give people an award, they post it up on social media and your brand is involved. If you have events, um, if you have other, you know, what content are you asking your users to create that includes you? How do they do that type thing? That's important. Are you taking the photographs, the before and afters? Are you doing time-lapse videos of things for people? The more content you get that, that you help them do, the more they can post about you. Are you even asking them to post about you? The reviews and testimonials is one part of it, but hey, if they're coming to visit your business or doing something, ask them to take a photo and put it on social media. Uh, and, and while I'm on that, share this video with people. Our job as business people is to help all businesses succeed. If you're a business person, you want every other business person to succeed. That's why I do this free stuff so that you can help as many of your friends succeed as you need to. It's not just for you to watch, it's for you to share with others so they can learn too. What are we up to? Number 17, not watching. Let me say this. You need to be watching the leaders in your industry social media, okay? You need to see what they're doing. What are they doing? How are they doing it? If you want to get better at YouTube, you need to be watching other people's YouTube videos and see what are they doing and why is it working? How are they getting this many thousands of views and I'm getting this many thousands of views? You also want to be watching your competitors, see what your competitors are doing if something's there. You've got to, you can't just do good social media in a bubble. You've got to see what your competitors are doing. You've got to see what the leaders in your, in your field, in your industry are doing. And that way you can do better. I know even, you know, for your blog post, when you get on Neuron Writer and you compare yourself with the best articles of your competitors, all of a sudden you start to get better because you're beating the other people. You're doing what they're doing, but better than them. You've got to watch, you've got to look, you've got to read, you've got to listen to your competitors if you want to be more successful at social. Number 18, ignoring trends. Um, how do I put this politely? When... It's like, oh, I don't need to get on TikTok. You know, it'll go away. Oh, it, when there is a trend in social, whether it's a platform trend, whether it's a video style trend, what the social media, because I, I forget who it was that taught me this. I think it was maybe in one of the YouTube secret books. Daryl probably said this. He said, you know, when I stopped fighting Google and YouTube and I just found what they wanted and I did it, the, what they wanted so that I could give them good quality content that they wanted out in the marketplace, all of a sudden they became my friend. The trend is your friend. If Google wants shorts, I'm giving them shorts, okay? If Facebook wants real, you know, whatever it is, jump on that platform trend most definitely. Now, the second type of trend that, that we need to think about now I know that you can jump on some wrong trends and that's definitely happened. I know I've done some of that stuff and no, I've never done the dancing videos because that would just be stupid. Me dancing, that would just, yeah, I know some people are going to write, Brad, do a dancing video now below this thing. No, I'm not doing a dancing video. I look like those things at the garage on the side of the road when I dance, you know, those blow up things. But when we look at what trends are in the marketplace, you know, if let's just say I'm a business coach and there is a trend in the business world called an economic downturn. Should I be making videos about that? Yes. 
I remember when the pandemic first hit, probably a week into the pandemic, I did a video uh, and we put it out there and I think it hit, you know, some ridiculous number of views in the first 24 hours. It was the 11 things you need to do to economically survive a downturn and how you survive a downturn in the economy. And it just blew up. Why? Because it was following what was needed at the time. What are people searching for? That type of thing. And that's where, like, we use TubeBuddy, going back to analytics, use TubeBuddy to see what people are looking for out there in the marketplace on, on YouTube. Um, number 19, forgetting your target audience. You know, know who is your avatar, know who you're speaking with, speak to them clearly, be... Uh, if you keep forgetting who your target audience is, you're like a TV show that changes all the time. It, it, you've got to be focused on your avatar. And uh, more clarity you have on your avatar, the easier it is for you to create great content because they know who you are, they know what you stand for, and they want your content. Uh, and final, number 20, not going mobile, okay? not Not doing things for... Look, 70% today is on the phone. It's not on desktop. So you've got to be mobile with what you're doing. You've got to make sure that it is easy there. And one final point uh, on that. If, if you are not commenting, sharing, liking other people's stuff, you're not going to get that happening for you. I know when I watch a good YouTube video, I make a comment on that YouTube video. Now, if it's a YouTuber who's getting... Uh, if I'm one of the first commenters on their YouTube because I have subscribed to them and all of a sudden this person's got 600,000 views and I'm one of the first people to comment, you think they're going to comment back? Yes. And they're going to look at my profile and they're going to see and so on. You've got to be doing that whole commenting thing. Anyway, Hopefully by doing this, you can stop doing some of those mistakes. You can change it up and you can get there. If you haven't downloaded my free stuff, click the button now. Uh, it's right there. If you haven't had a chat with one of my Action Coach team, click the button now. Get to meet with one of them, fill in the questionnaire, and uh, let's get your business growing.